Hello and welcome to uh, what is probably the last video in this style. That's not true. I want to do one more of these, which is just like an overall guide, like a general. Here's the here's the nutshell of the last little series of guides I've done. But in this video, I am going to talk about the items. We're not going to do anything special for this. I'm just going to kind of go through and point out what's good and what's bad, how to combo them and things like that. Uh, so I don't know all of them. I want to start off with that. I don't know how you combo every item, but I will teach you what I have learned mostly from doing, but also a lot from people in the comment section saying, hey, I did this thing, it was cool. So we will run through. So I wanna start this off with general philosophy. I have stated in the past and proven uh, in my Discord that most of the items before floor 12 are not impactful. I, to prove this, did a run where I picked up no items of Classic Hard and I cleared the Floor 12 boss with no items. So, uh, I think that this philosophy skews my item decisions, which is to say, generally I like to play safe throughout the rest of the game. I tend to play very conservatively with my character picks, very carefully with my curse picks, making sure I've never stuck on something terrible. That is not the case with items. I think that almost every item is fine. So like they're all a net positive, well, mostly a net positive. So generally the plan is up through the fives. What you wanna be doing is, to me anyway, picking items that have a chance to do something really broken later on. So for example, uh, this, is a nine point item, right? This is a tier nine. I have Horus plus one to all pips. However, in a in the correct circumstances, you can get the same effect out of, where is it? Where is it, where is it, where is it? I know it's a tier two. I just can't find it, here it is. You can get the same effect out of Golden Thread in the correct circumstances. You can get the exact same effect as a tier nine out of this tier two. So what I like to do is I like to pick items that are either for sure going to have a nice impact on my run, like immediately they bail me out of a bad situation, or have a chance for the lower tiers to scale into something more incredible. Right around tier six or tier seven is where I start to want to make sure that I'm getting some real value out of the items, but uh, we'll get into that when we get there. So let's start at the top. Uh, big Heart. So I'm gonna kind of try to do these in batches. So Big Heart, and is there another one in this tier? I don't think so. I think it's just Big Heart. I click this item the most because it has the highest chance of doing something really, really broken for a tier one. The item combo with Big Heart is Dogma, which I have to find it's here. This is only pips change when the side is replaced. So this becomes set your middle side to seven pips for a tier one. It's a tier one and a tier five to be fair. But if you hit that combo, you get this like crazy winning side. So I click this one a lot. Ballet Shoes is also very good because there are a ton of left side replacers and this is swapping your left to your right. So your right is a blank, usually, or the weakest side on most of your characters. So having the option of Ballet Shoes out of the way is super good. And again, tier ones aren't really all that impactful. So you can just click this and pretty safely say, well, sometimes it'll do something really good and sometimes it doesn't. And that's fine too, because tier ones don't matter that much. But the other thing I will mention for this one in particular is it's good to equip it, except for an item poison runs, it's good to equip this because it moves the most important side away from Petrify, which sometimes will matter. Uh, Courage Potion, this one has a combo. It's, uh, and some, sometimes if your run is really bad, this just bails you out. But the big one here is you can blindfold off or inner strength off the potion. Anything that cancels keywords gets rid of the potion keyword here. So this then just becomes plus three to the left side. Now, uh, the next piece of philosophy here is that I don't care a ton about single side improvements because you can go dry. In a recent run, I went 33 rolls with my wizard without hitting perma boost over the course of three fights. So I like to plan away from that, but it doesn't, it's, it's not something that you wanna like avoid, you know? I don't put a ton of value into it because it can happen, but it won't happen too often, so you can still play around it. Just be aware, if you're playing around like single strong sides, you need to make sure that you have other backup plans for when you miss. You need other things going on in your run. Uh, compass, it's just a side mover, it's fine. 
Uh, I don't tend to do anything too crazy in particular with Compass. The big one you can do if you hit multiple ones is you can combo it with Basilisk Scale to move the plus three out. But generally speaking, I think Compass is whatever, pretty much. But, you know, side moving is good. Having the ability to move sides around is very strong, so it ends up high on the list. Uh, Poultice is super good. One mana heal, too. It's like a easy bailout. No big deal here. Uh, Tattered Robes, I don't see it a ton, but this is good because a lot of the Tier 2 Blues actually can take this really well. Let me go take a look. With the resurgence of Mr. Sparky, uh, he loves Tattered Robes because now you can always roll to 0 for his 2 damage mana gain, no Xs. This guy doesn't like it. It's good for Seer. It's uh, it's not good for Glacia. It's not good for Evoker. So it's really just those two. But it's also good on a lot of greens if you're playing any greens. So I just pick it up for that. Mostly it's just for Sparky though. And sometimes you get like Wax Seal and then it goes kind of crazy. Uh, Quiver is not really good. But the main thing that it does is it fixes your start if you have like Clumsy or Scoundrel for example. Anyone who has a lot of blanks, this is more of a I click this because my start is really bad. It doesn't have any strong combos. I guess Wax Seal, but that's only 5 damage range, which isn't really all that good. Uh, Necromancer's Tome is super good. I love this item. The replacing the left side with 3 mana pain isn't great, but casting spells from defeated heroes is really, really good. And, you know, sometimes the 3 mana pain side is fine. A lot of characters don't want this, but every now and then you'll have a character who does want the Necromancer's Tome side. Particularly, this is good if you have a multi-blue party. Uh, Bone Charm. People have been telling me this is actually worded incorrectly. It's no penalties at all. So if you have Heavy Sleeper and you have Bone Charm, uh, sweet. Very cool. Heavy Sleeper just doesn't activate if the character holding Bone Charm dies. So uh, that's the combo that you need to know. I haven't seen that one yet because I'm never going to click Heavy Sleeper, but I have been told about that one. Uh, generally, though, Bone Charm is just really good because... It lets you play more aggressively with things like pain. You can just send your characters to their deaths. Uh, and I'm going to try to rapid fire through these ones that aren't that interesting because this is like 400 items we're going to cover. And if I spend a minute on each of them, buddy. Uh, Anchor is two shields. It's probably one of the most consistently fine pickups in the game. Two shield on turn one. Sweet. Knife bag. Uh, good. Fine. Nothing to say. The pain doesn't matter a ton. Um, usually this is best for if you're having greens, because greens have a lot of X's, but it's whatever. The knife bag also is nice, though, if you have some sort of, like, required... If you have a tactic that needs single damage things, which I don't know if there are any, uh, but you can spend it without using too much pain. Sorcery Notes is good because of bowl. If you hit these two for whatever reason, this combos really nicely, but we're already at 50% at this point. Mainly, uh, most of the things that this combos with are tier 1s, but sometimes you'll have, like, Pendulum with this and you'll clear out a bad middle side, for example, or you can play with Cloak, for example, recover twice the middle side, uh, things like that. But this is, like, mostly you play this on Clumsy. Similarly, Cloak is really good on Clumsy, and Cloak is really good on... It's a nice pickup because you can tech it in on fights like Tarantus and Inevitable and give characters that are guaranteed deaths a dodge. Also, you can tech this in versus Hexia to give a dodge to your blue, which is pretty nice. The trouble is you're losing a middle side, but that's where you can have cool side replacers, which I think the middle side, or the side movers, I mean. Are there any? I think it's just Pendulum, though, and that might be... Oh, here it is, Pendulum. It's not even that good, though, because you're replacing with your left side. Uh, cheater Sleeves, or sorry, Cheating Sleeves. Mostly this plays if you have a Sorcerer. It's not actually that crazy to get a 5x out of Sorcerer if he's got all 1s, especially if you have another character with 1 cantrips. Bull. So this does not cheat curses. The reverting sides do not cheat curses. Generally speaking, you can't cheat around curse effects. Actually, you know what? I think I might be wrong. Bull might actually cheat curses. I know Stasis doesn't. You know what? Bull might. I don't know that off the top now that I think about it. Um, generally, though, this is for fixing items like Rusty Plate, like, uh, not cloak, but like, uh, sorcery notes. That's what you take this for, and it's fine. Uh, sometimes it pans out later on with things, too, but generally speaking, I think this is whatever. I basically never equip this. I just random into it a lot. I think that very few characters actually want to replace their left side with one damage cantrip. There's probably some, but, like, this is just not very worth it for Balasong. Pendulum, 
Swapping left and middle is not all that useful, I'm finding. I don't see a whole lot of situations where you want to do it. Corset is pretty good for some characters who have a weaker left side. Or if you picked up memory, then you can play corset plus memory as a combo, which is nice. But it's not too bad. One of the things I'm noticing here is a lot of these ones synergize with themselves for little bonuses, but it's not really run defining if you get this. It's just kind of nice. Click this and kill Hexia. That's what this does. It'll also peel the ghostly off of inevitable, but this will not peel off, from my understanding, it won't peel off stone monsters on turn one and it won't peel off ghostly monsters. I know it won't do ghostly monsters, I saw it in action. So just don't get blindsided by that. The big one for this though is this potion trivializes Hexia. Very good to know. I guess you could use it to cheat around Tarantus as well if you don't want to deal with Tarantus's death, but I don't I wouldn't do that. Doomblade is pretty good. The big thing about this is if you get a blindfold or something like that, you can just have a bunch of three damage over your X's. But the big thing is this combos for tactics really well, but it's basically never a downside to have a three damage death option instead of an X. If a character low rolls, at least if things are really dire, you can trade their life for three damage, which sometimes matters. Uh, Emerald Shard is dependent on the tier twos, but this is the piece that combos with Golden Thread to make a tier nine. If you if you hit these two. So I don't hate blind picking this because there are a decent number of tier twos that this is good for. Uh, this item, the only thing I can think of that this does is it lets you play Prophet's Rescue side really nicely. If you have a bunch of characters dying by like two at max health, you can Prophet Rescue with Way. But that's about it. I wouldn't click on this. The Scar is good if you are playing multiple reds because it gives your healers something to do on turn one if they miss mana. And that's not bad. Brain, uh, you know, whatever. Revert changes to the left side. Sometimes it's good. I don't like Doll. Every time I try to play it, I find it to be pretty underwhelming. Uh, maybe if you have like a, a way to stop these from changing, but I haven't hit any cool combos with it. And generally speaking, it's it's not that good. I think mostly this is good on greens because greens are usually full of shit anyway. So this is all right. But be sure you're aware it is base sides, so you can't do any weird item combos. I don't dislike Rusty Plate. I think that sometimes this is very good. It's usually not, but every now and then if you have a mid side replacer or like a statuette or a stasis or anything like that, this is three free HP, which, you know, it's better than nothing. Eh, you know, it's like, it's nice to have because you can kill thorns and slates, but you have to be really diligent about swapping this in and out. And I think a lot of times it's more harm than it is good to play arrow. So I, I don't like it a lot, but it does have some fights. Leather vest is good. Plus one max HP is fine. Copper ring is also fine. Plus one more mana, plus one empty max HP. No problem. Seedling is fine. I don't see it very often. Uh, it's good to click on this, and uh, did I talk about Big Shield? I don't think I did. Sorry, I skipped over Big Shield accidentally. Big Shield is good because most of the Tier 1 Greys, and most of the Tier 2 Greys actually, their left side is some flavor of Shield 4, so this is just making them more good at doing that. Uh, and the same sort of thought here, though. Seedling and Big Shield are both good for Roulette, if you want to play towards her, but I've been finding myself not wanting to play towards Roulette too often. Bark skin. It's actually surprisingly not that bad, especially in teams with no grays. Plus two max HP isn't that big of a deal. Or it's, it's not like... Immune to shields isn't that big of a deal, sorry. Plus two max HP sometimes gets you out of some bad shit. You put this on... You put this item on people like Trapper, who have the dodge anyway. And it's not too bad. Basilisk scale. It has some combos. The big, big combo for Basilisk scale is with the polearm. So... If you hit this, so it's plus three to the top side and start petrified, and then pull arm is replace all damage size with my top side. So you can just turn like, I've, I've had it turn my ranger into a four damage cleave dispenser. It's a giga combo. It just auto wins you all the way up to like fight 16 pretty much. So keep an eye out for that. Uh, you know, wolf ears, put it on lost. <laughs> uh. This thing uh, almost never does anything, but it's not a bad thing to pick up, Tincture. It doesn't hurt too much, but I think I would random over it a lot of the times. 
Exert, this is another one that has a few combos that just turn it into a tier 9 item, so I think it's fine to click on Iron Heart because you can play with the new Inner Strength or Blindfold for a free plus 1 to your whole team, which is very nice. But the big problem with this, it also works with uh, Stasis, by the way. The big problem with doing this, though, is that a lot of later items want to do the Blindfold or Stasis thing anyway, so you're spending your slot on iron heart when you can inevitably put it away later uh is the best way to put it right which isn't that coherent now that i think about it but let me rephrase a lot of times you're gonna have like blindfold demon deal later on and then you're just not gonna have anything to do with this iron heart but it's a tier one so who cares uh, no real thoughts on change of heart people tell me it's good i just don't like it very much uh, middle side plus one for each point of poison Whatever. Play it with the start poison curse. Or, I mean, I guess you can play it with, like... Whatever. <laughs> Revive Potion is good. Sometimes it bails your run out from a losing position. I think that when this is good, though, something has gone wrong. But... Uh, it's not too bad. I think that's the, the most important thing to say. It's not too bad. It's a nice little parachute, pretty much. Sure. Uh, usually the blank doesn't matter, but there's better things to do than reagents. Yuck. To infused herbs. Mana cost on a side? Yuck. I actually think coin is unclickable. I cannot imagine a universe. Maybe with some curse or something, but in standard hard gameplay, I don't think you would ever play this item now. Caster Root's fine. It's nice to have the X's covered up, and sometimes it can combo with something later on, but it's pretty infrequent, so I tend to just skip for something better. Uh, yuck. Um, yuck. Even at a tier 1, this item dropped 4 tiers, and I still don't click it. That's how bad this thing is to me. And, uh, yuck. The only thing for Clumsy Shoes is it's another one for blindfold the trouble is that you can't give it inner strength because the heavy is yellow but uh, if you don't know heavy and eliminate means that the target has to be the simultaneously most and lowest health so it has to be either the only unit or they all have to have the same hp which isn't very common but maybe you could use this against bosses now that i think about it worth thinking about anyway that's tier ones i'll maybe i'll timestamp these i don't know Deep breath. Ready? Let's continue. Uh, tier twos, start with Leather Gloves. It's super good. Uh, so the, the com I'll start talking about combos now. Leather Gloves plays with Ballet Shoes very well, which is nice to play. I pick Ballet Shoes a lot. I pick Leather Gloves a lot as a result. Um, plays with Abacus later on as well. Basically, you move good sides into Leather Gloves, and then Leather Gloves does a lot of work for you. Flickering Blade, also very good. Right sides are usually X's, so giving the X a 1 damage ping, which sometimes does a lot more, very solid. Love Static Tome if you're playing blues. Very easy to get the pairs and suddenly you're getting 2 mana out of a gray, which is very strong. Uh, left side Stasis, I find that there's a lot of cool stuff to do with Stasis now. For example, you can play Sapphire, or sorry, not Sapphire, you can play Ice Cube plus Corset. The stasis will stop this X from changing, and you get the plus one. Uh, it plays well with some later ones as well, so I, I've been clicking on stasis a lot. Any form of it is really good. Two mana is two mana. Usually you're replacing like a two-ish damage side at the time that you play this, and two mana is two damage a lot of the time. So, uh, yeah. Kilt is cool. I like covering up Xs, and this covers up Xs, so I like Kilt. Usually there's not a crazy combo for it, maybe with Compass you could, but doubtful. Origami is fine. I think it's mostly just annoying, but the main thing that this does, the top and bottom swap, swap is basically nothing. This moves your left and your middle to the right two sides, which makes it a lot easier to play pretty much every tier one that has a left or middle replacer. So a lot of the tier ones are going to combo with tier twos is what you'll notice. Twin daggers is fine. Uh, mostly what this does is it gives your red something to do on turn one, which is roll some damage. You're usually putting this on like an herbalist to replace that worthless regen, which it's not that worthless, but you know. It's not what I want to be doing with herbalist, and instead you're just throwing some damage out. Powdered mana sick. I love covering up X's. One mana is good. 
Bless Water, I've found this to be less good lately, but usually this ends up on a gray or a red, and then it's slightly better than whatever they were doing, which is fine. Blessed Ring, you know, I love covering up X's. This covers up an X. It doesn't do anything too impactful, but sometimes it makes a difference. Clef, so I'll give I'll take you a second here. Other keywords times two to times three. I will show you an example. The easiest one that comes to mind to me is Sinew. Chain is an X2 on his left side. If you give him treble, this is now an X3. So if he chains off of like a, a second cleave, this will do a three instead of a two. This item is fine. I think sometimes it lets you do crazy combos, but mostly it doesn't do anything. So, you know, but some, sometimes it's nice. And tier twos aren't that stacked, so it's whatever. Uh, replace left side with four damage minus two max HP. It's okay. The main problem is that dropping so much HP means your characters are going to start dying off with this, and it's only one side, so they have a chance to miss very often. And a lot of times the left side isn't really the one you want to be replacing anyway. But this can go on a lot of grays, reds to have a side that hits four. And having a side that hits four is a nice little bailout sometimes. Uh, I actually love Faint Halo. Faint Halo chains off of itself. So if you have a character holding this who's dying by one and you save someone else, it'll also count them for saving themselves and you get two max HP. For a tier 2, this actually does quite a bit. Put this item on Priestess. Also of note, you cannot save off of things like Enchanter's Enchant Healing side, and you can't save off of spells. So, mainly this goes on like Priestess Medic, and then they just scale up. But the big, big one is Priestess, because giving her any max HP is super nice, and all she does is save people. So, that, that one's fine. I like covering up X's and this covers up X's and that's about it. Sometimes you play super long fights where you want to grow, but mostly it's just covering up X's. Having the ranged option, mostly I click this because it's good with triple shuriken. Having another way to chain is nice, but uh, it doesn't do a ton, pretty much. Oh, sorry, I missed statuette here. I click statuette a lot because I think that uh, it mostly just combos well with side replacers or X replacers, and sometimes you pick up fairy dust, and this is super good. And six max HP is very nice, so I'm in favor of statuette. Sapphire skull is fine. You just throw it on whoever you think is gonna die. Sometimes you have like cultist or ghast or uh, fiend, for example. And you just throw sapphire skull and siphon their life into something useful. I already talked about polearm. Mostly, this is a combo tool for basilisk skull. Other than that, I think it does not do a ton. I played it once, actually, on Paladin. It's pretty nice. If you have a good damage output setup, it's nice to make your Paladin always roll shielding. It's fine. I mean, mostly this covers up X's, but for the rest of the team, which is nice. It's also really nice to have a way to do range damage, especially on curses like Monster Pristine. Uh, and if you can ever buff this in any way, it can really pump big damage, but... I mean, I guess if you want a cool three-piece combo, actually, it could just be like Reign of Arrows. Uh, you, what you could do here, here's your here's your tech you could try out for the future. This is a three-item combo. Reign of Arrows, Basilisk Scale, and then uh, the Tier 5 Stasis item, Crystallize. That would let you have a four damage range duplicate, which is pretty cool. Uh, Wandify is good if someone on your team has two right sides that aren't very good. A few good holders of Wandify here. I'll try to call these out because nothing else has really had good holder callouts, but Wandify is one that needs to be called out. Uh, Juggler actually likes it because of the one damage self damage. That going away is cool. It's good for Spellblade. And the other big one that comes to mind is it's good for Collector. Uh, the rest of the characters, I don't really think so. Like, I wouldn't want to put it on Armorer or like Herbalist. Uh, Herbalist, maybe. But like, those are the three that I'm like, oh yeah, this is what I want Wandify for. Maybe, maybe armor. And these are mid-game items. Late game tier twos, I'm like, ah, whatever, man. I'm not wandifying anything in the late game. I'll just tell you that right now. But if you pick up a stasis or something like that, it's nice because it's a little plus one. But generally speaking, there's just a few mid-game characters that can hold it. It also can combo well with uh, powdered robes. Give you two single use, two manas. Or even powdered mana. Uh, Citrine Ring is okay. This is cl more clickable if you have ballet shoes, and less clickable if you don't. 
Now, even though I've only picked it twice, which I don't know why, I do think Remedy is one of the best tier twos in the game because one cleanse is enough to break out of Inflict Death off of Basalt. It's enough to break out of Inflict Exert off of Inevitable and Barren. It's enough to break out of Inflict Pain from Wisps or Demons that's particularly bad. It's enough to break out of... Uh, is there another one? I think the big ones are Death, Exert, and Pain. The Inflicts get cancelled by this, which is super, super good to have. Uh, Golden Thread is fine. This has two combos. It combos with Emerald Shard to give someone a plus, plus one, and it combos with Polished Emerald to give plus ones. Uh, mostly what this means is you take this, you put it on your yellow, and then you use that to give your blue or red plus one to all their mana sides, which is really good. Uh, Liquor is okay. Mostly it's just the plus two max mana. Sometimes the swap is nice. This is another one where the swap is good because it swaps you out of the way of Petrify, though. Uh, fr Friendship Bracelet is actually a bait. I think this item looks really good, but usually if you have uh, 5x the amount of health that the enemies have, you'll also have 10x. This is probably good if you're playing, like, blue-blue parties because it lets you make demons run away better which is nice because sometimes you'll get trapped by demons or thorns. But generally, I think this is whatever. Square wheel, I have a lot of trouble replacing the middle side, I find, but sometimes it's okay. It's good if you have blank replacers, I'm sure. Quicksilver is really good in cases where you're playing someone with steel. The god Quicksilver combo is... Scrapper with Quicksilver and then Self Shield on damage sides, which is the tier 7 ornate hilt. This combos super, super well because uh, your Scrapper, as soon as he rolls his first shield side, he can basically just go infinite. He, he turns himself into this unpenetrable wall because it just doubles his shield every time. But outside of that, it's kind of whatever. Peaked Cap is okay. It's good if you have something that's like. Uh, good for your middle side, which there are actually a lot of tier 7s that are good for your middle side, and then you can peak cap them to duplicate them, which is really nice, but uh, it's bad early. This is definitely more of a late game scaling pick. Worn Arms at 2, I think there's a lot of better 2s than this. I didn't really love this at 1, even, so I think it's fine at 2. I think it's about where it's supposed to be, but uh, not a ton of starting characters really need this. It's good to cover up Xs, though. Wings. It's really good value if you can get it. I just think it's really hard to get it. Uh, first aid kit got fucking guttered. I'm never clicking this shit anymore, man. Replace the bottom side with heal to cleanse. No thanks. Uh, Tower shield is the same as big heart, but it's a tier two. And you pick it for dogma. The shield, the heavy on this is so bad, but if you can get rid of the heavy, I mean, shield seven is cool, but mostly you pick it for dogma. Good with bowl. Actually, unironically, this is a good one if you took Bowl at the start, because you can undo the minus twos, so you just get the plus two here. That's cool. Same thing, good with Bowl, good with a middle side replacer as well, uh, but otherwise not very good. You need something for this to be worthwhile. Foil, whatever. I mean, it's fine. Mostly it's covering up Xs, but it's a lot less good at twos. I think there's a lot more impactful like winning twos than this, so I don't take it too much. Eh, whatever. I mean, it, it does what it says. There's nothing crazy with it. It's good if you have healing. I have actually been hating on Silver Imp a lot lately. If you have a way to clear the pain out, it's fine. But mostly this just kills off a character for no real value I'm finding. I You get nothing out of it, it feels like. You just sit there rolling a bunch of death over and over again. Spinach is good if you have empty max HP like from Scar or if a character was killed in the last fight, which both of which are fine. Yeah, both of which are fine. I mean, it, it's not bad. It's usually like if I have someone who I think is going to die a lot, I click on spinach. But usually in the early game, I don't know that. So I tend to go for something higher power. Sorry, buckler here. I, whatever. I don't really want to be shielding. It's good if you have a strong steel character, I suppose. Or if you want to pass on bloodlust later on. But that's a lot of effort to pass on bloodlust to your middle side through urn. Growth sucks. I mean, especially on the right side. Growth is just not very good. If you play double red parties, though, or like double red, double gray, like defensive, for example, 
autumn leaf is probably a little bit better but growth is not very good as a whole it's hard to hit the side multiple times for it so i don't love it uh no <laughs> uh no uh also i mean it's a dogma pick rejuvenation wand needle i have i had someone tell me that they did a cool combo for needle which was uh what was it? it was they put it on a character with a bunch of cleaves and then they just routinely set the care the enemies to like four ish hp to kill with needle it was like four or five was what their cleaves were at probably four uh, and so they used that and then the cleaves killed the other sides too which is cool but mostly this is a take this and pray you have a way to clear your keywords out named blindfold and then i mean it is a plus two which is cool well now uh, you play it on a, an exert character i guess but probably not okay tier threes give me give me a sec okay ready HP, very, very good. At its worst, this item is usually going to break even after three turns with the pain. Just don't put this on someone who's hitting like threes or fours on these left two sides, and, you're, and you don't want to put it on someone who's cantripping a lot. But if you put this on someone who's using like two to three of it per turn, it's very good. And also, there's a lot of ways to cheat around pain. So for example... Pocket Phylactery is just a way to mitigate something like Siphon, which is also very good because then you're getting plus one to all your mana and mana gain sides, and if you value that at nine points of item, you're tripling this thing's power, for example. Uh, Lead Boots got a lot better because now you can take Sticky off with Blindfold or Inner Strength, which is very good, and then again, tier nine. But also, it's not too bad if you have someone like Soldier to just slap this on them. Just be, don't fall for the bait. I find myself falling for it a lot where I'm trying to force this lead boots value and it's not that good. And what ends up happening is I just sit there and I go, oh man, I got to put this lead boots on. And then I fuck myself over in the fights. Like take it off if it's bad for you. Just be aware. Flare. Uh, Harpoon is fine. Again, I like covering up X's and that's what this does. Max HP and mana. Good. I haven't gotten offered this very much, but this item was good. I don't know if I still think it's good because it's been a while, but I think Unholy Strength is good because plus one to the middle side is very strong. It's best on someone who has a way to mitigate it, but also if you have like a redirect in your party, this is pretty nice. Generally though, I just click on it if I can, but two out of two, so maybe it's fallen off a bit. I like covering up X's. Uh, it's like you click this because you need cleanse and you're not sure you're going to get it on anyone else. And then you slap it on your gray in the late game and you go, nice, I have some cleanse. Cool. Now I'm not just going to lose a long fight. But also, uh, if this is your only source of cleanse versus Hexia and she just cleanses whoever's holding this, uh, L, pretty much. Clover is good if you took something that replaces the middle at the start of your run, like a cloak. You get full value on both sides, which is nice. And a plus one is pretty decent, so I don't hate it. 100 max stored mana is the real power of Golden Cup, but this also combos with Second Heart, because Second Heart will just give you 100 health with this, which is very, very strong. Uh, Scalpel, it's the same sort of theory as Golden Thread, where you're trying to cheat the plus one onto someone else, but you you can also use like uh, side replacers on reds plus Scalpel, so you can give them like uh, Twin Daggers plus Scalpel, for example for a plus two, or a two damage cantrip to all to two sides, which is nice. Shield one per turn is good. Ash is fine. I think that it's, it's hard to evaluate because there's so many ways you can combo this. If the other item doesn't do anything for you, you can click on Ash and you can hope you have a cool combo, but you're never gonna know ahead of time. I hate this item. I just randomed into it twice. This item sucks so much. I think like, it's mostly just annoying, but sometimes you can play it to bail out of bad fights. Like a, maybe there's a fight where you have four four skeletons you can't kill, and you have four mana. But even then, you could just spend the mana, I feel like. so. Because the big problem here is it deals the damage to heroes as well. Uh, also be careful, if you set up like a 20 damage mana, mana bomb and you don't kill, it will just end your run and you can't undo. 
Uh, plus one max HP and the row shift is nice because you can shift something into the left spot to mirror it, or you can shift an X here to replace it. Lots of good stuff for Abacus. Cover up X's with short sword. It's good. Juice is okay, I think. Self cleanse is fine on the left side. It's not like crazy, crazy, but. I'm not happy about clicking this, but I'm not mad about it either. But I, it, this is probably the point where I would start randoming. I do like three of a kind, but you need a side mover for it. It's really hard to have something on the right side for three of a kind. But if you have a way to move your sides around into the right sides, I mean, three of a kind becomes a lot better. Eh, I mean, it's just like it combos sometimes, but it's hard to know if Blood Chalice is ever going to do anything for you. At the time that you take it, you don't know what your run plan is going to be. So it's hard to say, oh yeah, for sure Blood Chalice is going to pop off here. So I think it's better to just go for something better. But it's up to you. Mana gain death to the left side. I actually think this item is pretty good. But it you just kind of support yourself on this all-in play style where you put this on someone who has a high damage side like Barbarian, for example, or Ghast, and then they die and they cash in another 10 mana. Those are the obvious two hits for it, but... Yeah, I mean, mostly it's just you cash out mana and then blow up a character and win the fight off of it. Uh, diving Suit kind of sucks. This is, like, it's a way to recover Xs, but for the most part, not a lot of characters have sides below they want to replace. Or, like, not a lot of characters are going to have the sides for this, so... It's whatever. You're very rarely getting actually good value out of this item. If Whetstone is good for you, Whetstone is very good for you. And uh, that's it. It's good if you have Soldier, it's good if you have Veteran, it's good if you have Ludus. I would actually consider taking Ludus with this item, but I would only consider it for a moment before I said no. Uh, mostly it's Soldier Veteran that want this. Or if you have like Short Sword or Long Sword or any of the sword items, it's good too. Uh, Longbow's whatever. It's fine. I don't really feel too strongly about it. Top and bottom replacing is not super important, but it's nice to have the range sometimes. It's probably a little better in the multi-blue party so you have a way to do damage. Uh, sometimes Lightning Rod has saved my life, so I'm not gonna call it bad. I think it's just fine. Uh, and sometimes if your run is really bad, you can use this to clear horrific fights really well. Uh, also, if you can remove pain off of it, this thing becomes crazy. Uh, Wham! So it's a times two versus targets with shields. This is mostly for if you have a way to put this onto, like, heal mana gain sides you can pop off, but I don't know. It's it's hard to get any value out of this, and very few enemies are shielded. Uh, lol. Ritual Dagger is something that I pick if I'm playing a party with greens, because Ritual Dagger Twin pretty much makes your run unlosable. And... I don't know. It's like another bailout item. You can fix lost positions off of this, but it's not great if you have to. I just never see this item. I think it's fine. Plus one to incoming shields is not bad. It's pretty good to have more shielding. Because it's good if you're playing into steel. I just don't get offered it very often. I mean, just like, not really for ladder. That's all I have to say. Not really. It's, it's a side replacer though, so it can work with the other side replacer things. And that's worth mentioning. But, not really. I don't like Sprout. Uh, but it's probably good if you're playing, like, defensive or something like that. But in a standard run of, like, basic, I'm not clicking on Sprout. But if you're playing, like, a stall, I actually think only defensive because I don't think Mountain is a stall party. So, uh, you know. I, I wouldn't click on this too much, though. Aegis, I gained a lot of respect for this. Cranberry and I, we did the little, the little co-op uh, mastermind run where he tried to ruin my run and then I tried to ruin his. He played, not this, but he played a version of this item which was Prince with Steel on his middle side. This does make you kind of invulnerable, which is nice. If you have any way to boost this side, it's very good, but I think defense is a little overrated. Incense, I'm coming around on it a little bit. Mostly this is going to do nothing for you, but sometimes it lets you turn bad rolled X's or exert sides into 
a plus one to your side, which is kind of valuable, but mostly I think this item is annoying because if you put this on a side like a mana gain side and then you have a charge side like a sparky for example, you can't get the mana before the charged, which is a pain, but it's probably not as bad as I make it out to be. I just think it's more hassle than it's worth. This item sucks. There is never anything you want to be growing on the opposite side of this. I would like, oh my god, it's terrible. Heat is good if you have a way to put shield on all of your units. Otherwise, it's a lot of effort for not a lot of value. You need to be hitting like two or three targets with this for it to feel good, I think. And if you aren't, I mean, ugh. It's just, it's one of the worst ways to cleanse unless you have like a flute or a robot or a poet, and then it becomes one of the best. Cantrip shields also work for that matter. Yeah, put this item on statue. Uh, if you can clear the pain out, I mean, it's okay, but it gets worse as the fight goes on and it kills you and it's a big combo for a single side and it's just not worth it. Syringe sucks now. I think it's an okay... No, I actually would never take this. I think it's really bad. Uh, yeah, the end. Don't, don't click this. If you get forced into playing it, you can equip it, but Cantrip is not an effect that I think is worth having for three of my characters being dead. <laughs> uh, these both suck. Uh, alliteration on damage is really bad. Uh, it's like impossible to get any value out of this. And uh, I mean, the only character in the game that I think uses smelling manure is fucking Spine. Actually, that's not entirely true. I guess you can combo this with inner strength now, but uh, don't do this. Like, just don't do it. There's so many better things to do. All right, tier fours. Inner strength is God. Red and purple keywords. I'll just show you real quick what this removes. So it does remove bloodlust, but it also removes eliminate evil flesh. The big ones here are that you're actually going to see in your run. Uh, it removes possessed, but I think it doesn't actually take possessed off of the, the the boss Wendigo. I don't think it does that, but it takes off potion. It takes off. Where is it? I I rolled past it. The big one here that it takes off is it takes off Decay, Exert, and it takes off Pain. Those are the three most common that you're going to see. But it can also do Potion, and it can also do uh, Sticky as well. So this item is so busted. Like, I think it's one of the strongest items in the game, sort of busted. It lets you do so much crazy shit. Uh, Dragonhide is nice because it lets you play consistency. You, you get to turn one side into three sides, and sometimes this combos really well with Wax Seal later on, which is nice. HP is HP. Most blues are really happy to have natural as a little fallback. Having the ability to just hit two mana is nice, and sometimes you combo this with Polished Emerald too. Glass Blade is good. Five damage is good, and there's no major downside to this. If you lose it, you lose it, but... You can usually get away with this. Big thing though, don't put this on your top hero versus Tarantus. You will lose it. Magic Staff is good. I like to pick it because there are a few tier 3 blues that really use it well. There's a few tier 2s, like Sparky likes it, Caldera likes it, Fiend is fine with it, Seer doesn't like it, but like Glacia likes it, uh, Maiko is actually not that into it, but like Jester's okay with it, Evoker doesn't like it, but there's like 5 tier 2s for it. But there's also... Wizard really wants it, uh, and this guy really likes it, Sorcerer. You could also put it on Ace, maybe. But on top of that, it can go on most of your reds, too, if you need. Like, it's good on Fey, it's good on uh, a lot of a lot of characters that make mana like this item. And if you picked up something earlier, like uh, Powdered Mana or Ecstatic Tome, it's also very good. So it's just generally pretty good. This spell kills ghosts. That's all there is to say. Alembic is nice because mana gain and pain is good. Very important, you cannot inner strength the pain off of this. It doesn't count. I don't know why, but you can't take away the word pain from this item. I tried, I was upset. But you put this on, like you put the mana gain on and then you just blow enemies away and you don't care about the pain. Or you just put it on the pain side. It's whatever. I don't really like Obol, but I've got a high pick rate. It doesn't really ever do anything, but it's good if you have side movers. 
Bone Saw is a shitload of damage for your reds. This shit lets them go crazy. Most reds are just happy to start tearing shit up with these three damage rules. Eye Patch is good because you can take. Uh, there's there's three big picks for Eye Patch. There's Barbarian, of course, but the honestly arguably better one is Bash. Takes off the Exert. And uh, the other big pick, of course, is Ghast, who can hold it, which is nice. But you can also just take negatives, like there's... Uh, it's actually it's also a tier 4. There's Demon Eye, which can work with that, too, which is just pain and plus 2. So it's nice to have. It's a nice little perspective pick. Oh, it's good for Roulette, too. Sorry, I forgot about Roulette. It's good for Roulette as well. Uh, Life Bolt's fine. It's better for defensive parties, but it's not terrible to have the ability to just heal a character with a bunch of pain on them. TR is nice, especially with the changes to Siphon. I think this item is good, but generally, even if you don't have it, self-heal on mana means that your blues and reds are much better off at not dying. I don't think this item does a lot. It's okay, but it doesn't really feel like it does a whole lot. Uh, I guess you can take it and then combo with... Uh, you can use it to try to combo to get Prince's Unite off. <laughs> don't do that. Aru. I actually don't really know. I mean, the good thing about this is that the sides are pretty decent and you never miss, but you can't use this to cheat past Exert. Mostly, I think you put this onto, like, Fey or a bad character that you had to play, and then they, every other turn, get to do some damage. But you can also combo it with Urn, which is kind of fun, which we'll talk about later, but Enduring is nice on this. You get to get a bunch of keywords on these, which is cool, but eh. If you play multi blues, you should probably pick up Jester's Cap because it's nice to have another Jester. Uh, more mana is more mana. Mostly, big big thing here. Mostly, this goes on green. I don't think you really full side replace many other characters, but this is really good if you have greens in your party. Uh, it lets you set up cool item combos. It, basically, every other you get four characters with three item slots and one character with none, so you get to try to set up some cool item combos off of this. But I think it's kind of hard to do. I find it to be, it's hard to know that you want this when you pick it is the trouble. And with no other benefit, it is kind of just dead weight, but it's an okay perspective pick. I honestly think Chakram sucks. I really don't want this. I don't want my shields turning to damage. So I don't love it, but you can try to set up some cool one shot combos off of this with like a keeper with steel maybe. And it's probably good if you're playing like mono gray. Demonize okay. The pain is usually, uh, you're able to get around it very often. And then it's just a free plus two. Uh, whatever, man. I mean, you can play invest if you like. I don't think so. But if you're playing slow, it is free two mana per turn after you get your four mana. HP is HP, and one regen is one regen. Th this item fucking sucks. I hate corruption. I picked it a few times. Your healers just kill themselves. I think the only thing you can do with it is play it on like Vampire or a self heal damage side. Or you can, you know what you can put it on is a self heal mana gain maybe. But it's hard to know if this is going to fuck you over. So mostly I don't only ever pick this if I had a way to, I, you play it I guess to play for a bonus later on, right? Like a blindfold. But uh, your tier 4 wants to be more. Like, I think there's more to get out of tier 4 than this, so I just don't click this very much. Alright, let's talk about Crack Plate. This one I need to spend a little time on because everyone always asks me, why don't I like Crack Plate? So, what's wrong with this item? Well, fundamentally nothing. There's nothing actually wrong with it. It is usually just going to break even or give you a little more HP. The issue is in the fact that this doesn't really offer a lot of value. I think it fakes you out into thinking it's offering you value. What it's doing is it's giving you... So every turn that your character gets hit, it's gaining you HP for the four damage that they take to the shield, right? Because it comes back. The problem is that a lot of times characters that are holding this aren't going to get hit or they're going to get poisoned or by the time this takes enough damage to, to start showing you real value, you're getting like nothing out of it, right? The fight's already over, it didn't matter anyway. A big concept in assessing value is understanding when the fight was already decided. If this generates me four value, but it's on a turn where I had, gen I had the ability to just like make five shields anyway, 
and still kill the enemies. It doesn't matter, right? The fight was already over anyway. So I don't care about it in, in those positions. So what does it do to you? What does it do for you early? Well, not a lot, really. So I don't care for it too much. It makes you weaker to poison, and generally speaking, it's like, it, it, in the best cases for Cracked Plate, it's probably going to equal out to be about the same amount of value as like, it's probably going to equal out to be about like 3 to 4 HP, right? That's what I find, and it's just weird 3 to 4 HP that loses to poison. However, if you have a steel character, like any character that uses steel sides, this item is super good. So you can blind pick it for that. Better enforce, I bet. Soup is fine. I don't have anything. There's nothing to say. It's a net positive, so whatever. This is the same as Sapphire Skull. Put it on the character that's going to die and get mana. Mana Jelly is good on single-use manas like Seer or Artificer. It's also good for... Uh, you could play it with Stasis, actually, which would be really nice. I think this item is pretty good now. Uh, it's, it's also... I, if I click on shit like... Powdered mana, powdered mana plus mana jelly is cool. Ink bottle covers X's. Oh, uh, eggshell is another way to cheat pain. So what this does is it turns all colored numbers to zero. So if I go to, let me go to keywords here. I can show you real quick. If I go to pain, pain says if you have eight damage pain, I take eight damage. Eggshell will turn this down to zero, but it'll also turn things like mana gain down to zero. So just be aware that you're not overwriting too many things. Just look at the colored numbers, basically. But I think this item is fine. Uh, cover up X's with copycat? Sure. You're losing your middle side. Usually it's fine for the copycat, though, I think. It's hard to trade four max HP for something that you might just not roll. But if you have a something like Leather Gloves, it's pretty good. Mostly what you do with Fairy Pact is you put it on a shitter who you don't care about. Like if you have a green, for example, or like a particularly bad gray that's not doing anything, you just slap Fairy Pact on them. If they die, they die. And if they live and give you four mana, cool. Beam kills birds. Dynamo's okay. It's good if you're stuck in like, if you're playing a slow play party, something that's really long, and drawn out. You can slap this down on someone and then just wait for it to pay out, but usually it's not that worth it. Splitting arrows covers up X's, and if it doesn't, you don't take it. I think this spell is just too expensive. At 3 mana, I would play this. At 4 mana, I think it's just, like, not that good. It's just, like, bursting at that point, almost. Power Stone is good if you're playing multi-grays, and uh, that's about it. I don't have anything else. It's good if you're playing multiple grays. But, you know, the classic cla the classic question in basic, who's putting shields on your gray? I don't know. I, I guess you can, like, burst, and then it's just free shielding, because then you get the, the mana back. But anyway. Oh yeah, I think Hissing Ring is good. I just have found that there's so many good tier 4s that Hissing Ring gets outclassed, but 2 mana poison, or 2 damage poison is really good. Not much. What's up, dog, with you? It's not terrible if you have a way to spread the top side, but uh, it's not... Like, it's good at fighting bosses over dog. The times two versus less HP targets is good. But... It's just kind of, like, hard to roll. It's hard to commit myself to single side stuff, right? I don't want this. Pulley was one character hold pulley plus two items, so three items in total. And sometimes this does a cool combo, so it's fun. The moving of the item, or the moving of the spaces doesn't really matter too much. Uh, yeah, I don't think it really matters at all, to be honest. This is the better growth item, and I think that it's fine. But basically, uh, who cares? Growth, growth is good in parties where your run is, like, slow and drawn out and I don't think you want to play like that too often because you just get your lunch eaten by the hand but if you do like playing that way I mean th the problem is that you have to roll the side twice so I think the characters that really hold this well are characters who are doing nothing but rolling for one side like ninja can use it 
Uh, it's also a little better if you have like Pilgrim for the reuse so you can get value out of it immediately, but growth as a whole is kind of bad. Also, sorry, I skipped Chainmail. 3 HP is 3 HP. If you have a way to heal this up, it's fine, but I think that very often this is not going to offer you a whole lot of value. So like, it's hard to find the time to heal the four on turn one, and then as long, if the target, if the character who's holding this item takes damage, it takes even longer. You're very rarely getting value out of this. Who holds this item? Hey, you know what's funny? If you put this on Doctor, he does double poison to himself, I bet. <laughs> An apple a day kills your doctor. Well, now. Mostly, I think you use this on the heal mana game, like on Fate, and it's okay. I don't like spending mana to replace blank sides, but I think this is good if your run is bad. Duel is... uh, it's like, whatever. Helps you kill demons, I guess, because they're always targeting you, but... A lot of times this does nothing, so I just don't care. Shuriken's fine. Pairs with pairs for triple shuriken, but there's probably better things to do. It's hard to have things for the right two sides. Probably really want like origami for this, something like that. Uh, you know, plus three max HP. Mostly what this does with red flag is it lets you pick a character who's just going to be your scapegoat. You have a really bad turn where there's like a big cleave hit coming, you just red flag, roll that, have one character take the whole bad turn and die, and it's fine. But that's about all that red flag does. You're never living this. Anti-Venom is good on poison-based curses, and it's bad otherwise, I think, because it's really hard to know when someone is going to need Anti-Venom. What this is good for is if you have like a Monk or a Stoic, that's a nice combo because then you can redirect incoming poison and then be immune to it, which is nice. At times two, if I have one HP, this is pretty good. The trouble is that it's really hard to keep a character on one HP. You have very little control over that. Uh, it's like the one thing I did with this that was kind of cool was I played, uh, it was actually, it was Cracked played on Ninja. And then Ninja was 2 HP, so if she died, she would instantly be 1 HP for Relic, but it's super hard to actually get that. Really, you just need a bunch of max HP downs for this. Okay. Ready? Let's continue. Stasis is super good. There's so many things to do with Stasis. You can fix... Uh, so basically you can put stasis on second and then post effects like basilisk's scale for example the petrify just can't apply you can stasis to get through exert because you just can't be exerted with stasis because the side can't change you can stasis through single use you can stasis through weaken you can stasis through inflicted exert you can stasis through death you can basically stasis through fucking everything you can just get the plus two but then not take pain actually i think you can't do that for demon eye it's, it's one or the other for this, but like, at a five, I think this item is super powerful. Can you do anything else? I mean, there, really, this is just one where I can't tell you all the things you can do. I can give you a list of short, a short list of ideas, but like, you just have to play it for yourself. I think it's almost always worth taking. Bag of Holding is three items, but you also get two max HP, which is uh, fine, I suppose. I like door because if you get value out of this, a plus two to all shields is going to be really good. And most bosses activate this. Actually, all bosses, but I guess dragon in the hand don't by default. But this item is just pretty strong. I like Doomblade a lot. It's really easy to put this on a character and then not have them kill themselves. And then you're just getting a free plus one across the board. And I don't even think you need to take the guilt off. Usually you're fine. The big holder for this item to me, there's two of them. I think it's Spellblade and it's Juggler. Juggler in particular can combo super well off a of Doomblade, but just, just be aware. I, okay, this is going to be... I, I want this video to help you if you're trying to seriously play the game and not just be goofy and silly. You should not click on Gizmo. This item is fucking terrible. It's so, so bad. But it's also really funny. So I click it every time because I think it's a lot of fun to play. 
and see what goofy shit there is. Because here's the thing, right? We look through these keywords, but there's this like fucking, there's this hell scape down here of all of these weird keywords that you can only get through shifter, like trill. If trio's condition is met, gain the effects of skill. The problem is, the big problem here, this is a keyword, <laughs> death. So you can just roll death on that shit. Or you can roll, like you could have lethal. One time this happened to me. I had lethal and my shit rolled heal. And I went, oh, I just can't kill them because it heals them. My attack heals them. Cool. It was hypnotized. I have never seen this. Anyway. Super fun item. You should not click it if you want to win. Focus on heal and self-heal is good because this lets you play focus on heal mana gain sides for your tier threes, which is nice. I like getting four mana. That is good. Wand Grips is fine. Uh, if you took the tier two stasis item, this is just a free plus two because you can't get single used. And uh, yeah, I don't know. Plus two is fine. Usually the thing is, a lot of times you can just trade this off onto a high value left side. Like Wizard can use this really well. Um, I think you could even put this on like Warlock potentially, but Sinew is another one that I think holds this pretty fine. It's not too bad to just say, I'm going to double or sometimes triple the value of this side and just say I'm going to use it only once, because that's pretty good. If you think about it like that, where you're playing the side one time for 3x the value instead of three times for 1x the value, it gets a little bit better. Uh, I mentioned Dogma a few times, so the way that this works is if you have a side, like, basically the side stays and the Dogma pips are replaced. This does work with duplicate, so you can go like dogma with a duplicate combo, but it only passes on the pips, remember, so it's usually just a nerf there. Mostly this is for some sort of crazy shit you've seen. I had a generated item once. It was uh, it was my tier 9, I think. Or no, it was a tier 8. It was uh, M.4. Rejuvenation Wand, which gave me 4x the effect of Rejuvenation Wand, which was a 40 dam or a 40 health heal, and I had dogma, and that run was pretty easy. But uh, yeah, generally speaking, this is just you click it because you picked something earlier and said, I'll take this because it might be good for Dogma. Because when it's good, it's really good. Nchaku is fine. Chaining is cool. It's not too hard to find keywords to chain off of on your top and bottom sides. A lot of cantrips, a lot of cleaves, a lot of ranged up there. You can play around. And chain can chain off of chain, which is good too. But mostly you can pick this too and play it for triple shuriken, which is still in the game, right? Yeah, okay, thank god. I was like, I, I'm talking a lot about Triple Shuriken. I've picked that, right? Sure have. If Simplicity is good, Simplicity is a tier 9 item. And if it is bad, it is not. You put this on Dabalist or on like a regular Joe mana gain guy. Someone who has like boring mana gain items. It's all good. Uh, it's okay. It's like Chainmail, but you have the empty HP to play off of, which is sometimes nice. It's better if you have reds for this. Uh, if your party has no reds or bad healing, it's less good. Uh, go. I, I'm not going to reiterate. Polished Emerald is good if it's good, and you just have to know. I can't. I can't say any more than that. I threw out the combos that I think are worth knowing: the Golden Thread, the Scalpel. You kind of just have to look and go, "Does this work?" And the answer is very often, "Sure does." Plus one max HP, and you cover up an X. It's fine. It's not something I'm super excited about, but. Usually this is covering up an X with a stun, which is pretty nice. You can give a stun over to Stoic, for example. Second stun there is nice. Horde is fine. Uh, it's the same thought as Wand Grips, where you just click this and you go, I have a bunch of garbage items I don't care about, and now I'm going to turn that into like a plus four for my side. Ambrosia does cool shit. Sometimes you can rescue your units by killing enemies, so this is just as good on a kill side as it is on a defensive side. But... You know. I think Shining Bow is super good. Ranged is nice to have. Lets you bypass some shit. Helps you chain later on sometimes. But it doesn't come up too much, though. I'm talking a lot about this chain shit. It doesn't really come up all that often, but I don't have anything to say about Shining Bow other than ranged is ranged and going around on hit effects is cool. So, I'll move on. Stack of mana. I think this item kind of sucks. Double blanks is pretty bad. If you have something that replaces the top and bottom, though, this is pretty good. 
but you're often not getting a ton of value out of this. The biggest use case for Sack of Mana to me is if you're playing very strongly around your blue and your yellow is completely worthless, then you can just give them the X's and say, go, moron, make mana. Like a leader, for example, is someone who could hold that item. Uh, this item, lead here. So what this means is the type is the, so like damage is a type or healing is a type. So what this lead does is Scepter does one damage and then gives all other damage sides a plus one. And this is a colored number, which means it's the same as the number of pips on the side. So if you boost this, it's a plus two and so on. It's okay. Uh, mostly this is good if you have like one damage mana gain characters like Spellblade or Caldera like this a lot. Otherwise, it's fine. It's good too because it's a left side replacer for like Barbarian or Roulette. So, you know. Poodle is good, but I found that a lot of the heroes don't line up on health anymore. I liked it a lot more before, but like I had Glacia use this really well at 9, but uh, like the Greys have a little bit more HP, like 11, 15, 11, 9, 9, 10, 11. Whereas the Reds, who you're usually playing this off of, are like 10, 8, 8, 10, 10, 9, 11, 9. Like, because the thing with Dog is it goes on, like, Profit here, and then Profit can give you 4 mana gain. But you typically want to combo it through your Greys as well. And they have different health numbers now. So it, it's basically just a weird ego a lot of the time where you just cast it on yourself, because you always have the same amount of health as you. But, you know. Cracked Wheel is... To me, this item is like, I have one character who has one side that I really want to roll, like Wizard with his perma boost, for example. So you just sack one of your other characters and make them into a dead weight in order to get a plus one reroll. That's my cracked wheel feeling. And it doesn't come up too often, but having a third reroll does make it a lot easier to hit a specific side to win. Ruby is fine. It's good when it's good, and it's usually good in multi-red parties. I think Sponge is really good. It lets you snowball super hard if you have fights with a lot of small goons, but it is pretty worthless in most boss fights. But the condition for a plus one to all sides being kill one enemy, pretty solid. Uh, this item at the top is kind of whatever. I don't love replacing the top side. Sometimes you have a character who you don't mind giving up their top side for the ability to hit a two damage ranged engage, but it's not too often I find. Longsword is good if you have damage side increases. Like if you have a plus one uh, for damage sides from someone, like the scalpel for example, this item's all right. I, I like Ordinary Triangle as much as I like characters with three pip sides. And what that means is I think this is good on... Uh, it's good on... It's okay for Soldier. It's particularly good for... Uh, where is he? This guy. Knight has all threes. But it's hard to know. And it's not that big of a deal, so I don't sweat it too much. What you're gonna find is it's not, it's good if you have someone who uses it right away, but for the most part, it's like, eh. Usually, it doesn't seem to pay out to me. Bandana is cantrip to all pipless sides. This does not mean zero pip sides, very important. It means pipless sides. So it means like, uh, sorry, hero. It's not shit like. I don't, I don't think there's a good example of this, actually. No one has a zero pip side, but it's cantrip to dodges and death defies and stuns. So people say this is good on pilgrim. It's also good for enchanting as well. I don't care about it on pilgrim because cantrip stun is like whatever. Cantrip death defy is usually not going to do a lot. Mostly all I use this item for is cantrip dodge, which is okay, but not great. Demon Horn is good if it's covering up a blank, and otherwise I'm not too into it. It's okay because it's inflict pain and it's heal too, so usually it's evening out, but you use this and you get a little extra mana usually. I find it to be pretty underwhelming. Uh, there's better ways to get cleanse, I think. Usually, if you really need cleanse now, just force the game to give you Stalwart or Paladin. Or, more accurately, if you really need cleanse, get Doctor. Or, honestly, get Shaman. If you're so doomed that you need Cleanse, roll for Shaman or Doctor. Shaman, Doctor, Paladin, or the other one that I said. What was his name? Stalwart. Got it. You click Cocoon because you say to yourself, I'm really afraid I'm going to die to Hexia or Inevitable. And if you're really, really afraid of that, you click Cocoon. 
I am more afraid that I'm going to die to the hand, so I don't click Cocoon much. It's okay for bosses. Sorry, I think I said Overdog is good for bosses. Overdog is not good for bosses. Sorry, Underdog is good for bosses. This thing is like... I don't even know who this goes on. I guess it goes to healing on low health targets, but... Never mind. Fuck Underdog. I don't care about that thing. Overdog is good for bosses. The bottom side is usually not, so I don't care about that. Shimmering Halo is a slightly worse version of the other Halo that I praised. You would think if I like Faint Halo, why don't I like Shimmering Halo? And it's because this is a tier 5, and tier 5s have a lot better options than this. But, I mean, some, it's okay if you get it. It's not a big deal. I probably wouldn't re-roll it. Maybe I would. It, this is, like, right on the cusp of re-rolling to try to hit something big rather than uh, just taking solid value. It's like right on the edge of value. So you can make the judgment on if you think this is worth it or not. I despise Pauldron. Every time I click it, I'm just so mad. Like no character wants this. I think the only thing for Pauldron is you have to have compass. Because then you can take a dead right side down to the bottom and then you can put Pauldron on your left side. And that's probably the only thing that it can do. I think the only character I've used early grave on to good effect is Ranger. Because Ranger has the 4 damage execute and it won't activate unless it kills someone. So that's probably the only character I'd play early grave on. I don't really think it's good on anyone else. If you have a way to clear the pain though, it's good. So that's fair. I just haven't had it line up, but if you have like inner strength already, this is fine. But again, sometimes there's better things to do than just cantrip. This thing's okay. It's like boring. I don't really care about shielding, so I don't care about Aretha Sight, but I mean, it does shield. Engage, single side effect. It's okay to play, but engage is not a great single side. Like, I don't care about this. And uh, this would be better if it was like the right side. As the middle side, it's kind of hard to call, but shield two to all allies is a lot of value. So I don't hate it, but I'm not clicking it much. Okay, how are we doing? An hour and 11 minutes? The last time I did this video, by the way, it was uh, three hours, I think. So I'm making pretty good headway here. Hopefully you're finding this helpful. I, I always struggle with balancing, like, not spending my whole life on a video versus uh, just giving good information. A lot of these things, though, I think it truly is just you have to try it out to figure it out. That's always going to be my final thought on stuff like this. You need to go try things to really figure out if they're good. But anyway, let's get to it. Tier 6s. This is where it starts to be like, I want something really, really high impact here. This is where the items start to matter. Cantrip to all sides with exactly one pip is really good because of wizard. You can buff after the cantrip effect is applied and it keeps the cantrip. So that's an important thing to know about items that I should have mentioned sooner. If you have the side change in combat, trigger effects like this will not be affected. It'll always be activating a cantrip even if the side gets buffed or debuffed. It doesn't matter. Important to know. So you just put this on someone who has ones and then you buff the ones up if possible. Braids is good. The left side is usually your best side and then you get two of your best side. Usually very strong. Demon deal is also very strong. A lot of late game characters can use this and you can do a lot of work to get away from pain. And a plus two to all sides, I mean, I think that's like a tier 15 item. So it's if you can get around the pain, this item is absurd value. Shield 2 is Shield 2. It's very fine. Dual Loop is also fine. Doesn't go on Wizard, but it goes on anyone who has a 1 pip. And Mana Gain, particularly this goes really well on Curator, but I haven't been seeing him very much lately, so. But mostly it's just like, it's fine because this has a chance to really win you the game if you hit some good combos with it. Health is health. I've spoke like I've spoken most of this tier list in context of blindfold. It's just worth mentioning that this item has so many things it can do for you. It is crazy how many keywords you can take off. This goes on barbarian. This goes on roulette. This goes on uh, not so much on roulette, I guess, but this goes on barbarian. This goes on any of these items that have pain application. It goes on warlock. I mean, this item is so so powerful. But sometimes it's not good, so don't click it if it's bad for you. 
Uh, it's another way to get around pain, play amulet. If you if you have to just play like I mean demonic deal you won't play, but if you played like Aki or Amulet, it's called that, right? Sorry, it's called Demon Eye. Which one's Aki or Amulet's the six that this one is Aki or Amulet. Yeah. If you have pain on the left sides, it's fine. I, this is like not super good if you don't have pain that you're canceling out. But if you do, I think it's pretty fine. You play Blinding Bolt with a steel character, and then you put up so much shield that you one-shot a boss. You play Silver Pendant with a Steel character, and you put up so much shield that you one-shot a boss. Jump is super fun. The losing of the blank on the left side to get the top and bottom is good, because top and bottom sides are usually the same, but you're losing a side that usually has a lot of keywords for two sides to have extra keywords and more consistency. I think you're fairly likely to hit these sides over a few turns, and jump is fun, so I suggest it. Conduit's good. Mana's good. If man is bad, conduit's bad. But it plays well with prism, which is cool too, and like anything like that. Ways to increase this make it very strong. So keep an eye out for those. <laughs> Lich's eye. I love this item. I actually think it's pretty good. You slap this onto some shitter who hits average. The best holder of this item is Ludus. This is so good on Ludus. It's also fine on veteran. The big tech is you play this and then you search really hard for shaman. Or not shaman, sorry. Um, and not Forsaken, it's uh, Surgeon. You play this with Surgeon, and then the, your character just kills themselves and then stands back up because they made the mana to get back up. So you're getting huge value out of it for that. I, I think this item is super all-in, though. It's either a big winner or a big loser. Eucalyptus is good because it lets you... This is like a way to kick out of uh, bad inflict pain, inflict exert cleave sort of deals, but... It's fine. It's one of the better cleanse items. I don't value cleanse all that highly, though. Eh, eh. You know, single side buff is whatever. I've picked this and then just missed the side and died, so you gotta be aware of that. But pristine is pristine, and it's okay. And sometimes it doubles you up pretty nicely. It's a way to make your sorcerer go infinite, for example. God, I love Crescent Shield. If you can put any pluses on this item, it goes crazy. It's like solo run winning sort of crazy. So it's fun to play, but sometimes it's not very good for you. Twisted Flax is usually good because your top and bottom sides are usually pretty strong. Lots of units can use this. Again, I'm not going to go through and tell you like, this is good on these characters because you can just kind of look. If this is getting netting you plus two and minus one on a side you don't care about, it's good. And I trust that you can work that out. Mostly I'm here to tell you about cool combos on sides you don't care about, or like don't think of. Candle is fine. It's like a, it's a bailout item. It's also good if you're playing twin, which I think is fine to say. Uh, if you're playing greens, you can pick twin and then candle is pretty solid for that. And I don't know, usually what you want to do with this is put it onto someone like Surgeon or Valkyrie, for example, so that you can just bring the characters who died back. This is the sort of thing, too, where you're like, you're playing for death as well. You want death sides to get extra value, and then you just get the bonus from this as well. It's a nice little way to synergize. Rule is fine. I don't find it to be all that useful, but it's not bad to play. It's just kind of like middle of the road, you know, which is why it's probably middle of the road pick rate. Uh, this item got a little worse because Basically, this is only good for Roulette and Barbarian in my mind. When it was 1 and 2, it was a lot better. But since it's only the first turn now you can't die, if you go to 1 HP just like spending all your health on pain, your character is just going to die the next turn anyway. And usually, I think you want to be securing your win around turn 3. Turn 2, it's a little harder. So I think Determination's a little worse. Uh, I don't see this too often. Honeycomb is good. It's a times two for free if you have any cantrips or any double uses. Otherwise, it's not very good because it never procs. This is another one, same as Ash. Enduring is so much to explain. There's so many combos, it is staggering. It's keywords remain when the side is replaced. So if you put on... Uh, if you put on, like... Let me give you one example. Let's go to Big Heart because it's easy. If you put Big Heart onto, uh, let's say, I think Poet. No, not Poet. He doesn't work. Oh, so like Big Heart onto Valkyrie with the Urn would give you heal seven and it would keep the rescue. 
that's how it works. And it is staggering the number of things you can do with this. So I suggest you just try it out for yourself. It's fun. Sometimes it's very broken, but it's hard to know how it's going to work out. You kind of just have to look at your items and see if you can do something with it. And if there's nothing better, you can just play it and see what happens. Infiniheal has, I think, exactly three characters who hold it. I will show them to you. So Infiniheal, sorry, this does say, I'll tell you what it says again. It's replace the two sides with heal, the two rightmost sides with heal all, retaining original pips and keywords. There might be item combos for this where you can move, move your sides around. That's something you're going to have to look at for yourself. There are three native holders of this item. There is this guy, Wanderer, who gets heal to copycat to all, which is pretty strong. This can do some pretty crazy stuff. There is Armor, who gets Smith 1 to all, and there is Fey, who gets Boost 1 to all. There's maybe some other stuff. Now you can put it on Jumble, I guess. But like, those are the big three, in my mind, that come to my mind here. Forsaken, no. I mean, Shaman, not really. No. No. Oh, it's okay on Surgeon as well. Surgeon is fine with it. Uh, I, actually, yeah, I would say it's good on Surgeon, too. Anyone else? <laughs> uh, no one else, I don't think. I guess it's o okay for Druid as well, but it's only one side, so it's whatever. And it's okay for Vampire. But the, the two big ones, or the three big ones are named. That's all that I really think about it. It's cool if it's cool, but usually it doesn't do a whole lot. I don't hate Hourglass. Plus one on turn one. Turn one is probably the most important turn in the game, so having this be a plus one on turn one is pretty good, but it does do nothing afterwards. There's no trick to this one. It's just you get a plus one turn one and then that's it. Wrench is a little bit better because the middle side is the reroll side, so you can play this on Kronos or Sorcerer to get a few extra rerolls out. And like, you know, Jester and things like that, but that's about all for Wrench. It's not something that I'm blind picking. I don't think it's all that good. Being able to stun a boss is nice, and I think I'm going to start picking this more, to be honest with you, because it's pretty good to be able to just say, hey, hand, don't on this turn. That's like actually really huge. So, but it's only really good for bosses. It's pretty worthless in regular fights. I had a lot of trouble with wedding rings actually getting any value. I think it's okay. Like, in theory, there's nothing wrong with this, but I've had a lot of trouble actually hitting the pairs. But this should just be another way for your tier 3 reds to be making you 4 mana. But it doesn't seem to work out. I honestly just think this item sucks. I, I feel like nobody wants this. Who wants self-heal to heal sides and shield to shield sides and doesn't have any damage sides? It's like, what does this do? I don't know. For a tier 6, this item is crazy. I think at a tier 4, I would maybe click it. Leaden Handle is good for Juggler, because Juggler then just spreads her damage evenly. And pretty much no one else. But if you have Blindfold, it's a free plus 1. I, water kind of sucks. Losing, it's usually just even, because most characters' right sides don't matter. If you have something that covers up this, I guess it's a plus 1 to your left side. But so is Ocular Amulet, and I think this item sucks too. I, I very, very much do not want to click on this. And in sandwich between these two items that I fucking hate is catnip, which is okay. If you have a way to move your left side to your right side, it's pretty good. Or like if you have a way to push things over there that are catnipable, it's fine. There's not a whole lot of right side replacers at this point though. So when you see this item, you pretty much know if it's good. Uh, fuck plus ones to the left side. I don't care about this shit either. It's for a tier six, it's not worth it. You're better off rolling for something better. Uh, if scales is good, if it's good, it's like it's hard to hard to give you good combo ideas for this. There's not a ton of them. Uh, the big thing, too, though, is if you have a way to put if you have a character who has something good on the right side, you can maybe try to scales off of an item you picked earlier, like Big Heart. But there's only really like two characters that can have that. It's like Wizard and Eccentric. So I don't know. I don't find this item to be good all the time, or very often I should say, so I don't pick it too often. Because tier 6 is about the point where I want the item to be good now. When you're picking your tier 6, you want to think two things. You want it to be good now, and you want it to have someone who can hold it later on. I don't think many characters want to hold scales, so I don't really like it too much. 
this item is just worthless. I don't want this. It Wizard gets a pass because Wizard is really, really good with boosts. I don't want Enhanced Wand. Oh, uh, Kite Shield. I'd, I've been asking very often, what the hell does this do? This gives Wizard three Self Shield, and it gives him, because the Perma Boost is a shield side, it is shield one single use perma boost. It does turn his perma boost into a shield three, but I don't know. I guess you could put this onto like armorer and that's okay, but I don't like armorer, so I don't like kite shield. I just feel like most characters this is a downgrade for. <laughs> no. And cauldron. It's again, I talked about right with incense. Cauldron is the better version of incense, and I just don't think it's very good because, you know, a plus one on the middle side is not something that I'm interested in playing. And you can't put this on cantrips because it just ruins your turn. So uh, don't do that. The end. Okay, home stretch. It gets a little easier from here for me as well because there's less items and it's a lot easier to tell you what's good now. Let's get to it. I'm gonna try to finish this up in under two hours, shall we? Boots of Speed is super good, not for the dodge side, but for the plus one reroll. The dodge side is actually a downside, but it's playable, you can play around it, and plus one reroll is really, really good because it makes it a lot less likely that you miss. So, uh, yeah. A lot of times I'll click on this actually, and then I'll try to just pick up something that I have already from earlier that lets me undo the dodge side, though. This is good on every red. No red is upset to take Dragon Pipe. It is just a plus one, and it's usually a plus one to your mana gain as well. Very strong. Steel is fine. I think steel is a very powerful keyword, so I'm willing to take it even though it only affects one side. Because it's a single side that kind of just wins you the game if you hit. And so I think it's fine. You just put this out. And it also, Anvil is one of the ones. Anvil and uh, Bloodlust. There's a Bloodlust one in here somewhere, I think. Here it is. Ogre's Blood. These both pair super well if you took Peak Cap earlier. But this is the sort of thing, like... I don't want to tell you these combos. I want you to know that a combo like this, I feel like is implied because I respect your ability to uh, put two and two together, right? Copy middle side on the left side plus stronger middle side, good combo. So if I miss out on some of those throughout this, I want you to know, I like I know and feel free to comment it uh, in case people don't pick up on it. But that's the sort of thing that I hope you see and go, oh, cool. I guess it's like it's a way a reason to pick peaked cap earlier. Anyway, duck is good on wizard, and there's probably a few other characters that are okay with this, but this item is very, very strong. If you can play this echo, it's really, really good. Uh, however, I don't, I, I, if you don't have your blue, if, sorry, if you have your tier three blue already picked, you probably don't want to blind pick duck because you want your seven to do something, but it's not hard to make this do something. Icar Chalice is good in multi-red parties, and it's good with Shaman. I believe, also, they changed this in the patch uh, for 3.0. The damage does not proc spikes, and I don't think it procs Pain Mirror anymore. So Icar Chalice got a little better as well. This turn takes what is usually your best side and gives you a second copy of it. Good. And it's usually covering up an X. Extremely good. Same thing as Anvil. Uh, putting the buff on the middle side is usually worth it. Lots of characters really are happy to play this. Um, Wandcraft is good if your blue is good and you have a strong yellow like veteran or barbarian. Someone who has these big damage sides that you can just turn into mana and fuel your blue engine. But if you don't, I think this is really only good on yellows. Most oranges cannot play Wandcraft. It really is like a yellow or bust to me, because reds and blues, it's a waste on. Uh, thimble, you click Thimble, and you laugh hysterically at Hexia, because she can't kill your blue anymore. Because it makes you immune to her mana burn effect. And that is very, very, very good. And also it's good to just cheat around pain. Another way to break out of pain, by the way. Charge Link is not bad. This goes on any character with a mana gain side, and then you have a charge mana side, which lets you snowball very, very uh, hard. Really good on Weaver, Artificer. 
It's also a way, if you have high mana gain output, to just, like, pump a boss into oblivion very fast. Charged is a very, very strong effect. Uh, Ornate Hilt goes on almost anyone. It's another way to beat Hexia. It also makes it so that Ludus is playable, which is, you know, not a big win, but whatever. Good for Barb, good for... If you picked a pain side earlier, this is another way to break out a pain and not die for it. And uh, it's also another way, if you are forced into playing Prince, you can use the self-shield to uh, unite, which is not bad. Put this on uh, Vampire, and then suddenly you can cast Prince's Unite for two dice, which is actually really strong. Don't, don't actually do that, though. I have a high Twisted Bar pick rate, because Twisted Bar goes on two characters, which turns them from suspicious to run winning. It goes on Wizard, who becomes extremely powerful, and it goes on Sorcerer, who becomes very powerful. Uh, it can also go on Kronos, and that's fine. The rest of the cast doesn't really want this. It can go on... Actually, Twisted Bar can go on, like, Fey or Spellblade to make them game winners. But it doesn't happen all that often, I don't think. Oh, Twisted Bar also goes on Agent now. Sorry, I forgot about this one. Agent has the quad use, and that's pretty good. Anyone else? Dancer, kind of. No offense, sir. Yeah, I think that's good enough. It's There's enough tier 3s that I think it's worth blind picking. Not you. Not you. But. It also has a combo with... Uh, not Wax Seal, sorry. Sickle. Where it's just, it's everything goes to 2, everything goes to 3. Very strong, but mostly this is just, if I don't have a blue locked in, I click this and it's like, okay, now I'm looking for a wizard or sorcerer to win me my run. Pair of Kings is fine. It's like uh, you pick this and you're okay with it because it's usually going to turn like a 3 to a 6, which is fine. A 2 to a 4, which is fine. It's better on the mana gain reds on the top and bottom, which I think is, I think that's profit, right? People like profit want this. Botany, I was going to dunk on this a little bit, but group growth is strong. There's a few characters that really, really use this. The big, big thing is this is like a defensive winner. If you're playing the defensive party, this is a huge dub. But I'll point out a few of the combos that I think this is good with. It's good for Surgeon because you have double use on these on these uh, heal sides. Because remember, group growth is they grow and the whole party grows on that side. Prophet can do some crazy shit with the heal three rescue plus the group grow. You can grow like three or four times in a turn off of this, which is strong. It's fine for fate. It's basically fine for the rest, but these are the two real winners with it. And, you know, it's okay for Shaman. Whatever for Forsaken. But, yeah. This is the sort of item that you pick because you're playing defensive, and it's really, really good in defensive. If you have a really, like, slow burn party, this item actually wins you the game. Oh, Wine is really good now. All monsters start poisoned. It counts enemies as they spawn. For wine, so like if Tarantus makes three spiders, they come in with one poison. So I think wine is really good for this. One poison on one of your guys to poison all monsters forever. Just be careful about playing it into the final boss, because sometimes it's kind of worthless there. Regen is regen. Plus one to shield and self-shield sides. It's a little less good, but it's still fine. It's like the lower end of plus ones, though, because I don't care that much about my greys. Also, some greys just don't care about that. I have so much trouble with Wooden Bracelet. It feels impossible to get this onto someone and have it be good. It's good for characters who use simplicity, you know, like Dabalist or Dabbler or Ludus or Veteran or all of that, right? Obviously. And it's okay with uh, Blindfold, but I think this item is usually just kind of bad. I don't even know what this is. This is Sharp Wit? This is Sharp Wit. Sharp Wit is good on Artificer. And I guess it's okay on uh, Ghast, I think. But generally, this is like a convert a blue who is a shitter into a big boy. And that doesn't happen a lot, but sometimes it can work out. I did have a Ghast, like, I, I had this on Ghast, and then I had Helm of Power, and my Ghast did swing a 30 into someone, which was cool. But I don't think you should do this. 6 HP is 6 HP. This is like, I would never skip Iron Helm, but I'm not, like, locking in on it, you know? Evo two reads is another one. It's very hard to actually get the plus one, I think. It's like, it's good if it's good, but 
I don't think a lot of characters really want this is the problem. Most of the characters that I think are really excited about something like Two Reads needed something like Twisted Bar instead. Because it's the same sort of effect. It's a lot of characters that I think want this are on one as is. Because going from four to five is not that good. Going from two to three is very good, but not a lot of characters are all twos. Flute is good. It's a... If you roll Flute, it's a two shield to all, which is very strong, I think. And if you're playing a very cantrip-focused party, this is replacing a right side, so you're not losing anything. You slap this on like a sorcerer or something like that. It's good. I think this is fine to play. So I don't like second chance. I used to like this item a lot. I talked about how I like to replace X's, but I don't think this item is the one that you're worth while on. I'm not happy to second chance. I'm not happy to go, oh yeah, my tier seven is let's reuse a dice because there's so many just fucking knock out tier sevens. This is just not all that good. <laughs> you know what I have to say about Glassheart? This is a, um, a gulp. This shit is horrifying. You, I've played this. I basically only ever take this on wizard or sorcerer. I'm, I'm saying their names a lot. They're the item dependent guys. Wizard and sorcerer are the guys where they carry your run super hard if you give them the plus one. So they're the guys that you're taking the risk for this shit on. And they're fairly, I mean, wizard is fairly tanky. Nobody else, I'm really like, oh yeah, let's slam Glassheart. Like, and I think that is true. Uh, Agent, you can lump Agent in there. Agent is, well, but Agent has Shifter and sometimes just blows up. Like, I'm not playing Glassheart Assassin to go to a three uh, shot. And I'm not playing like, I, maybe Glassheart Fencer, actually. But anyway, I just, I feel like I've just been saying Wizard Sorcerer, Wizard Sorcerer over and over again. But those really are the two that you want to be locking in on. Anyway, if I have Wizard and I have no other way to buff him up, I'll click on Glassheart. Or same for Sorcerer. It's like a the worst case scenario, right? But it's still a plus one to all. You just have to be super, super careful. Like very, very aware of the damage they take. Oh, you can play Pentacle with, um, where is it? You can play Tentacle with Infinity Heal, which is a six. That's a cool little one too. Mostly I think Tentacle just doesn't have anything. You need to be able to move the sides over for it to work out, which is whatever. Mushroom, it's like, I, look, I've had long, long discussions about this item. And I'm going to summarize it as this. If you're playing a slow based party, you should never click on this. If you can take the decay off, this is a free plus one, which is nice. And otherwise, I think you play this if you have to. <laughs> In any boss fight, I think this item is going to grief you unless you're really sure you're going to one shot. But all of the cool shit for plus ones, I think, are made worse by Mushroom. Like Wizard and Sorcerer, who are the ones who want the plus ones really, really bad. They can't play this because they're cantrip or reusing. So I think this item is not good unless you have inner strength or blindfold. Uh, that That's where I end on it. I It used to be like, well, it's okay if you have a character who has like a higher number than one because it takes three turns of rolling for this plus one to wear out. But uh, look, some fights just go long and there's nothing you can do about it. And I think Decay has a decent chance of fucking you over. But it's okay in the hallways because the hallways die fast basically just nah. There's better things to do with your 7 than charge. Single cast boost. Who wants this? I don't think anyone. The minus 1 is what does Demon Claw in for me. I think it's super hard to pay the minus 1 tax on this for the Rampage, because you're just gonna not get a lot out of it. But uh, maybe you could play this on, like, Barb. Maybe. You just gotta have a way to stop him from dying. Could be okay. Again, there's just better things to do than Broadsword. It's not bad, and it's really good on Twin, for example, or like anyone like that who has bad sides, but most of the Tier 3s by this point are having good sides, so there's just better things to be doing. And uh, there's just better things to be doing than Burning Halo. But again, it did get buffed. Uh, I think that this item does not do the, the Thorns damage back to you anymore. Oh, it also goes through the Null Armor. That's also worth mentioning, but... Not the golem armor, though. The null is, like, armored HP. I just don't think Burning Halo is all that good. Like I said, there's just better shit to be doing. 
Okay, home stretch. You ready? I will talk about the 10s as well. I won't talk about the 11s, I don't think, but I'll talk about the 10s. Let's begin. Serration is game winning. This is like you can slap this out for four or even five, vul five vulnerable sometimes, and that is game winning. Five vulnerable is a lot of damage. So this item is very good. Black Seal, also very good. Usually this is just a plus one across the board, and sometimes it's a lot more, which is really broken. Like super, super broken if this is good. Plus one, very good. Poison is one of the other ways to win bosses really well. So Poison Dip ends up being very good because Poison is strong to just let you win the game. Uh, you slap this on your yellow and suddenly you're hitting like five damage plus poison, seven damage plus poison. You're just crushing. Uh, Arrow with no downside is just like a guaranteed win in any fight that goes beyond turn four for your mana. The characters that you put Tormala and Pariva on, and by extension, by the way, Sapphire Ring, I don't think these are good for your blues. I mean, they're fine if you're playing like Wizard again or Sorcerer, for example, but these are really, really good for your reds. That's who this goes on. This goes on your fucking, your Prophet and your Doctor who are just out suddenly on turn three healing five and generating you five mana. That's crazy. That's so much value. Uh, same thing here. Tusk is, it's just Dragon Pipe in my eyes. Because again, it, it's the combination of Metal Studs and Dragon Pipe. And it doesn't really matter because Dragon Pipe just dominates in my mind. Prism is good because the middle side is the reroll side. And so this just goes on anyone who's rerolling. Uh, it also, it can go on duplicates as well. Like, Leader has a duplicate there, which is fine. Uh, generally speaking, though, this is mostly just to let you get more rerolls, I find. Does anyone else want this? I guess Agent can play it. And it's not too bad on Agent, either. Mirror Mask. You know what I've been doing with this? I've been doing... There's a few things to do with this. Because there's more greens, Mirror Mask is better if you're playing with greens, of course. Side replacers are good. The big thing, like my, my big recent tech development that I'm using, this is really good if you're fighting into the hand and the other option, like if you think you might lose to the hand, you can take this and then just grab a copy of your gray or your red and try to get yourself another chance at cheating past the hand, just killing your characters off. So I think Mirror Mask is fine for that. Like copying Valkyrie is just a stonewall the hand out of the game sort of play, but you can also turn your orange into a blue, and that gives you more mana if your orange isn't very good. You can turn your yellow into an orange if you have a bad one. So it's fine. Just note, this item actually doesn't work on twin. The second twin will copy the twins above its base size, and this one above it is a uh, twin. Lion is super good. This is the barbarian item. Basically, you just put this item on your yellow, and then you kill a boss from full health, or close to full health. It's... What this basically says, so they flee if they have N or less. So if you hit for 10 with Fierce on an enemy at 20 HP, they will take 10 damage, and then after that hit is done, if they have 10 or less HP, they will flee. So Fierce basically doubles your damage output if it would kill. And that is super, super good on a lot of yellows. Here, let's go take a look. What yellows is this good on? You're going to be surprised, or maybe not. Barbarian, uh, Wanderer, Curator, uh, Curator a little less so to be fair, Brawler, not this guy, uh, not this guy, Veteran, Bash, not this guy. So like most yellows just win the game off of this pretty much. It's okay for the oranges too, but it's mostly a yellow item, if you ask me, and it's a really good one. Ah, uh, Sushi, just go infinite. I mean, it really is, if you get Sushi plus Silk Cape, you just automatically go infinite. Uh, but if you're playing anyone who wants to reroll, it's good. So Sushi is good for Sorcerer, good for Roulette, any cantrip sort of deal. Lots of really good uses for Sushi. Sickle is usually just a plus one to all sides if you have the right setup for it. Or a plus one to all sides that matter, because your low pip sides are usually the best ones, like mana gain stuff. So I think Sickle is very good. Engage is also pretty good. It's good because you have three sides of Engage, so you're going to hit it more often. Uh, it's not like super powerful, but it's pretty fine. Anything else I want to say about this? Nah, I mean, it's just like, fine. This is not one that I'm like happy to click on though. So I might reroll if I have nobody who wants the engage, but the big, I guess the big thing is you can engage onto like a heal mana game 
and then that's pretty good because you're getting double. And then if you're getting real crazy with it, you could get like, if you had taken tie, you get engage and pristine, you can get times four out of it, which is nice. Or actually, well, you can't have prism this engage usually. Anyway, moving on. Scorpion Tail is nice if you have a character who has like a three or four uh, damage side, like a dabbler or a dabblist, I mean, or like a veteran. Those are the obvious ones. Uh, Barbarian can take it too. Just a few examples. What this does is it means that like, Dragon, Poison Breath, Hand, Cleave, Hand, Poison, Hand, uh, Fire Breath, Inevitables, everything except for the Bite. All of these bosses suddenly just get their damage output like absolutely neutered. If you put a 4 Weaken into the Dragon, instead of hitting your team for 25, he hits you for 5, which is just depressing. So the big thing about Scorpion Tail, just to reiterate and drive home the point, it really stonewalls most of the final bosses. It stops summons on the hand and Hexia. It's just very good. Fairy Dust is good if it's good. This is this item is actually why I click Statuette a lot, because I want Statuette plus Fairy Dust to hit. It's, it's a nice little way to just turn one of your characters into a monster mana gainer. Also super good if you're playing greens. See everything I've said about this effect before, and this item is the same. If you're playing for Steel, which you know at this point if you're playing for Steel, you can click on Iron Blood Pendant. It's also good if you're playing through Iker Chalice, potentially. Cleave to the middle side is less good to me, because there's not a whole lot of stuff on the middle that I want to be cleaving. I would want to cleave defensively, because offensive cleave isn't that big of a deal, because the final bosses are not really that interested in cleave. And I'm going to be mostly talking about final bosses here because by the time you're picking your tier 8, I think you have just finished fight 16. If I'm not mistaken, 17 is tier 8, 18 is a level up, 19 is tier 9, and then 20 is your last level up. Yeah, so you fit, you're on the home stretch. I'm not picking this to clear the last three fights. I'm not clicking this because I want to use it to kill a boss. No boss really cares about this. So I'm clicking this to... Uh, play defensive. And I guess that's okay if you want, but it, there's not a whole lot of defense that wants this. Uh, truly, I think that what you should do with Singularity is you should look at your team, and if your team is good with Singularity, you should play it. It's too big of a risk, though, to click this and say, I'll hit someone who wants this. Unless you know you're going to force yourself into getting wizard because like you have double blues and you've skipped enough that you're guaranteed it. I would just not take this blind. Oh, Iron Crown. Um, it's okay. There's one new challenger who's really good at holding Iron Crown now, because before Iron Crown was pretty shit. Uh, it's not too good for Stalwart. The character who really likes this is Poet. Poet gets a 5 mana cantrip off of that, which is super nice. Uh, it's also okay for Keeper still, but that's about it. Maybe you can make Prince hit a 14 one day. Uh, yeah, so Poet can use Iron Crown, though, because he can just, if he rolls his mana, he just made you 10 mana with this, which is good. Plus one to all damage sides is good. Greatsword kind of sucks. Be the big problem, and you're going to hear me say this a lot, maybe you've already heard me say this a lot, I don't know. Single side replacers and single side buffs are not all that interesting to me because you can just miss, and the tier 8 is where I care. I'm not happy if I'm sitting there with this side and I'm like, oh man, my greatsword, it's replacing my middle side. My middle side is usually something I wanted to roll anyway, and now it's sometimes 10 damage, but I just miss it a bunch. I'm not happy about that. So I don't like greatsword. The only thing that I think this is good for is twin. It actually turns your twins into something nice because with two twins, you will probably hit one of these swords per turn. Um, You can play this on like a super stacked steel setup, I bet. And it's okay, but I haven't had it line up. There are... Yellows are not a class that care about plus ones. Let me show you. Let me illustrate. Because again, in the tier threes, if you put a plus one on Barbarian, you're not going to notice. Brawler, I mean, maybe if you're trying to go for an infinite, but I think Lich's Tome got removed. So, you know, leader. <laughs> Captain, maybe, because you can get these two cleaves, but... Going like 4 to 5 or 10 to 11 is not what I want out of a tier 9, or a tier 8 I mean. So I'm not too into uh, standard. 
Oh, but it, you can cheat the plus one through Emerald Mirror, so you can perspective pick it for that, but I don't think it's worth it because this is the point where we're talking about, like, big run-winning items, and this is not that. Uh, may maybe you play Deadly Bolt, and then you just blow people up by spamming Witches, Salve, or some other one-cost spell, but I don't see it. Again, look at your team. If Brimstone is good, Brimstone is good. I think Brimstone is very often not good, but it's like Eccentric Wizard. Uh, you can play it if you took Ballet Shoes, too. That's the other combo piece for it. Dude, I fucking hate this item. I have no idea who holds this. It's so much effort for so little value. I, I do not want to play this thing. And I also don't want to play this thing. I think there are better things to do with your tier 8 than cleanse. Play Stalwart instead. Or like just play... Again, same thought as before. I don't want to spend a whole tier 8 item on Holy Book when I could just cleanse from something else. But if you have to, you can play Holy Book. Don't, don't get it twisted. Like if you're locked in on your gray and your red and you go, oh shit, I didn't pick up any cleanse. I have like... Profit plus Stoic, you can click on Holy Book. I won't begrudge you. I just think there are better things to do than Holy Book. But I, I also, I think this is a more important point. In Standard and Force, I don't care about cleansing because the fights should end before I run out of sides. Because the big thing that Cleanse does is it lets you not lose to Petrify. But yeah, uh, just don't I, don't... I don't care that much about Cleanse, but if you're playing like a a slow, slow party, you do have to have a source of cleanse or you die. Okay. Home stretch. Ready? Let's finish it out. Triple Shuriken is good because, uh, this, first of all, this dunks on Hexia. So at this point, we are just talking about final bosses. There's nothing else to talk about. Triple Shuriken is good because it's very likely that you have a way to chain off of it because you're getting chain on all of your keywords. And getting a free times two on something is very good. Like, for example, free times two on, oh, I don't know, mana gain. Or if you just took like a ranged item before, like Shining Bow, a free times two on all your sides, pretty good. Important thing to note though, this will not put the ranged keyword onto a side that doesn't do damage. So you cannot get like a ranged shield, for example, to chain off of, which is a shame. I don't see Overflowing Chalice too much. It's good if you have a lot of mana. Like, this is good when it's good, truly. And if it's good, it's really good. But... I don't know. I've only seen it three times, so I don't actually have a good feel for how it is. This item is so good. Doubling your HP is crazy. We'll put it like this. If you took an HP item earlier in the run, like, say you took uh, Pocket Phylactery, and you took Stoic, you can stun everyone but hand on turn one through second heart. And that's just like an obvious high roll, but the more middle of the road case is just that you get to take an important character and make it super hard for them to die. Don't put this on your top character versus hand though, you're gonna be really sad if he just executes them. Poison is good, it's the same as poison dip. Poison is good because poison wins you the fight. Uh, Silk Cape is good if Silk Cape is good, and Silk Cape is good if you have a good left side. Uh, by default, I think the best Silk Cape user is... Um, just running through it real quick. It's okay for Venom. No, no. The In my mind, the best Silk Cape user is this guy, Warlock, because now he can't miss his mana, and he's always going to be blazing. You'll notice, by the way, Warlock is one of my highest rated characters. I think he's very good. I haven't talked about him much in this video. It's because he's good independent of items. Mostly all he needs is a way to not die, which can be contributed to you by your units. But anyway, you can like Silk Cape Weaver if you like, it's not terrible. Uh, and, but mostly I think it's just fine. I would not Silk Cape Sorcerer though, because I think his power is when he gets to go crazy. Yeah, I think that's it. And there, there's more. The, mostly, I think Silk Cape is good with item combos. Like I said, Silk Cape Sushi goes infinite. But like, if you have a good left side replacer, you can Silk Cape through that as well. This is another one where you just look and see if it looks good, and if it does, then you take it, and if it doesn't, then you're you're fine. Sorry, Angel Feather. Someone pointed this out to me recently, 
uh, Stalwart, Keeper, Poet, Valkyrie, Paladin. So five out of seven of the tier three greys can use Angel Featherwell. This item is basically only for the tier three greys, in my opinion. Rescuing through healing is not too viable, I find. So I strongly suggest you just put this on the greys. You can put it on the reds, but it's not going to do a whole lot for you, I find. By the time it's really giving you value, you're probably taking like plus 30 anyway. So, you know, it's... Uh, most greys are good for this, and this is a way to just live forever, but I prefer to kill the enemies to living forever, but it's not the worst. Uh, collar is good. It's pretty solid to play Collar because it gives you Copycat, and Copycat is very strong. Again, just look and see if you have characters who have good side keywords to Copycat, and if you do, you can play Collar. Good sides are Steel, Charged, Mana Gain. Those are probably my top three. Maybe some others. Quad use, I guess, or double use are fine as well. Yeah, stuff like that. And mostly this is going to want to go on to like a basic side, like a Ludus or a Dabalist, for example. You can put it on like Barbarian too, I guess. It doesn't really matter too much. But I tend to put it on damage to try to go off. But you can do it on mana sides as well. Uh, look at your team. If someone holds Dumbbell, play them. This does not get plus four if your character has a three and then you put a Dumbbell on them versus the hand. Does not work. Um... Mostly, this is like, you know, Veteran, Ludus, you can put it on Warlock. Just look and see who uses this. And that's going to be a lot of the tier 9s, just look. Um, is plus 1 to all sides good? Well, it is the metric by which I have gauged most of these things, so I would argue yes. But you'll notice, I don't have a very high pick rate on most of these tier, uh, tier 9s. I have 5 of them above 50%. So I'm pretty picky with these, and it's, you know, reasonable. Boarhide is often just a game-winning pick. It's like you combo this with Fencer or Venom, you put it onto uh, mana gain sides to get four mana heals, things like that. You can do four mana regen on Doctor. Again, just look. There's not, there's not a lot to say about this, just look. Helm of Power does one thing to me. Uh, Helm of Power goes on Barbarian and it gives you a way to one-shot Hexia, for example. Or, uh, you know, you can put it on Ghast for 10 mana. It's it's not super good. I don't think I would like to lock in because it's a single side effect. But if you hit, you win very often with Helm of Power. It's just hard to hit. Oh, uh, good with Pocket Mirror, though. If you have Pocket Mirror, you should play this. Like, almost certainly. Again, just look. Emerald Mirror, it lets you cheat on the plus one if you had to take standard, or if you clicked standard because it was like the best option or you randomed into it. Uh, sometimes it does kind of fuck you over though. Like uh, Emerald Mirror plus, uh, there was one that I had that was really bad. What was it? What was it? I swear there was one that was like, oh, I can't take Emerald Mirror here. Oh, it was Demon Deal. It was Emerald Mirror. I couldn't play it because I had Demon Deal. That was the one. Um, Chaos Wand, it's a single side replacer. This one I'm probably the most lenient towards because I think that if you roll Chaos Wand on turn one, it does sometimes just save your run. And if you have Prism, you can just kind of all in. But that's an eight and a nine, and if you miss this side, you die. It's just important to note, if you miss, you die. So it has to not be your main plan, it just has to be something nice that you're doing. Right, because but if you do hit it, it's two vulnerable weaken on turn one, which is huge. It's big damage and it's big defense. <laughs> um, I don't really care what the stats say. If you have blindfold, you can play this for the plus three. Um, the only time I've ever used this to any real effect was when I had to, which was when Cranberry was mind controlling me in our co-op video. He ended up giving me this item, and then I had to use it to get value. And, you know, you just have to look to see how many how many sides fumbled to know what you're rolling to. But plus three is very, very good. Uh, again, if you can put time stone on something, it's good. Very often you cannot. Not a lot of characters want time stone. 
Uh, who wants time stone? You can play it on Dabalist. No. Dancer, it's okay. Roulette, it's okay. No. It's good for Wanderer. And it's okay for Curator. But like, you know, just kind of do this and look at your team and ask yourself, do I want this? Like, eccentric? Hell yeah. Th this is roughly what you have to do. Uh, very often, what you're going to find is, do I want Time Stone here? Nope. Uh, and then my pick for the worst one. Very contentious pick. Many people like to give me shit for this, but I think Charged Hammer is worthless. Because again, uh, so if this is a single side replacer and I give it a little leniency because it is not so bad, right? If it hits, it does a lot. When you hit this, it just does 10, which is not very good. And it's only 10 to the highest health target. I guess, uh, streamer, technically, it'll do, like, more because of charged. Yeah, how much mana are you making? Are you making 20 mana? Well, you already won the game anyway, so who gives a fuck? I don't really care. Uh, so I just think this item is not very good. When you roll it, it doesn't do a whole lot. It's 10 damage to the boss, which is whatever. If it didn't have heavy, I would like this a lot more. Okay, real quick, I'll run through these tier 10s. I don't... So the only way you're going to get a tier 10 is if you skip your 9 for an 8 or 10. I'll tell you what I think. Heart of Light is giga broken. This thing is like a fucking insane-o item. All blanks into heal, 10, cleanse, quad use. Absurd. Puzzle box, whatever. It, it Sure. I don't think it really ever does a whole lot, but sometimes it's cool. I, I actually don't know any combos for this, though. Abyss is cool. Uh, five, five mana, kill an enemy at half or less HP. Sure. Solid. Sure. Solid. I mean, that's what I'm going to say mostly. Stream is pretty cool. Add all keywords on this dice to the right side. The problem is that the right side is usually dead. The good version of that item is Whirlpool, which I think is a tier 15. No, it's a tier 16. All keywords present on this dice to all sides is much better, but that's a tier 16. Also, fucking RIP the Dolphin. My brother got dropped six tiers into 15. Good luck, buddy. Shiny Gauntlets, I think Pristine is not very good. I did get offered this recently, but you can also get these through tweaks. There's a tweak that gives you plus one item quality, but minus one choice. I got offered this recently. It's pretty bad, I think. I didn't take it, because, like, Pristine, top and bottom, nah. Uh, Antlers is just a plus one. I don't really know what the big deal is. Oh, maybe it can double dip. Like, do you think it goes plus one to heal and plus one to damage if you have a damage heal? I don't know. I haven't seen this one. And, uh, ha. Ha ha ha. If you have extra placers, it's good. Otherwise, don't. But again, like, this is the sort of item where I'm like, do I even need to talk about this? I'm sure you can answer for yourself. Is it good to put all of your eggs in one basket? No. But if you have extra placers, not like it at all. Or if you have, like, stasis, things like that. So, I guess my goal is to try to tell you how to mitigate these items. But for the most part, there's not a lot of mitigating these things. Well, that'll do it. That's all of them. I made it. Um, yeah, hope you found this helpful. I'm not going to talk about the tier zeros, by the way. The tier zeros, I'll leave for you to solve. Because there's most of these have exactly one use case, and you can just kind of work it out for yourself. But just know, almost all of these are in some way useful. <laughs> okay, I don't know about this one. <laughs> uh, times negative one what the fuck oh x minus one i bet yeah anyway these are funny i saw cranberry play this one he got blindfolded and he just had a 10 damage side that was pretty cool anyway i'm done here that's the end thank you for watching i hope you found this helpful i will maybe sometime soon give you a full-on like Here's how to beat hard in 10 or less minutes sort of guide, but I'm going to shut up. My voice hurts. I hope you enjoyed it. Have a good one. Goodbye.